okay. What were you trying to do? Well, the ground was hard, and I couldn't make any headway any other way, so I, I thought I'd use both feet on the shovel. I see. I guess you found out that wasn't a very safe thing to do. Yeah. I suggest that all new trainees will do a lot better and be a lot safer remembering we are all responsible for our own safety. Don't use any tool until you find out how to use it properly. That goes for even a comparatively safe tool like this. It can't see and it can't think. But if you'll do the seeing and the thinking, this can be a mighty useful firefighting tool. There are other types of shovels. However, for the purpose of this training session, we'll use this one, since the method of operation I'm going to tell you about will apply to most all the others. In our business, we don't take anything for granted. I've said this before, I'm repeating it now. Before you leave the fire camp or truck, test the handle for smoothness, it should be straight, and test it for strength. Also, make sure the head is on tight and that the blade is sharp. After you've made this quick check, you're ready to go to work. But you'll find that work a lot easier if you know the proper use of this baby. I need a little help for this demonstration, so let's join some of the boys who have volunteered to help me out. Elmer, you're a new trainee, and I don't expect you to know everything. But if you're going to be a firefighter, you'd better roll down those sleeves and button up that shirt. The fire is hot enough without exposing any more flesh than necessary to the heat and falling embers. Understand? Good. All ready, fellas? Good, let's pick up our shovels and go to work. That a boy, Elmer. You're coming along fine. Here's an important safety rule. Allow the man ahead of you to proceed at least 10 feet and keep that distance between you. This is as important in the work of firefighting as it is in walking. A safe distance may prevent injury to others and to yourself in case of a fall or other accident. The experienced firefighter carries the shovel at his side, grasping the handle just back of the balance point with the blade forward and the point down. Hold it, Elmer. Stay right there. If you see an experienced man handling a tool, it's an even bet that he's handling it properly, right? All right, then. Wouldn't it be a good idea to watch what they do and do the same? Take a look at the three men ahead of you. First of all, notice that they are all in single file, and each is about 10 feet behind the man in front of him. They'll keep that distance between them at all times. Take my word for it. You can get into an awful lot of trouble carrying a tool that way. Good. Keep on using your eyes. A man can be seriously injured through the careless acts of others around him. And the way you were carrying that tool was extremely careless and dangerous. OK? Sometimes even experienced men, I'm sorry to say, get a little careless. Always keep an interval of at least 10 feet between yourself and the man ahead of you. And the most important thing to remember is to keep your eyes front and watch where you're going. Now let's move on. Well, I'm glad to see that you're taking my advice and using your eyes. But I don't think you're seeing the same things I am. I'll explain. Notice how Dan's feet are placed properly and see how one arm is put against the leg above the knee? This way of working makes the job much easier. It's a smooth operation, much less tiring. Dan is moving the burning material back into the fire area to keep all fire inside the line. The reason for this is that it's better for burning material to be completely consumed as quickly as possible without danger of the fire spreading. Tom Jackson is efficiently moving still untouched material, that is, material that has not yet been touched by flames, to the outside of the fire line and out of danger. 
He is scraping a line down to mineral soil. Tom also utilizes the helpful supplementary leg muscles in working his shovel. Working in this manner, a man can keep going for a lot longer and become less tired. And here's another all-important safety rule which is being wisely observed by Jim Brady. Never work to the point of exhaustion. Take periodic breathers. Rest and relax for a moment before continuing your work. Now let's watch him work. Perhaps you'll recognize the importance of what he's doing. Incidentally, when it's necessary to walk inside the fire line, take extreme care to avoid stepping on burning material or on ground that might be weakened by roots or stumps which have burned out. Elmer, let's see if you've learned yet to use your eyes. Can you tell me what Jim is doing? Well, it, it looks like he's found some hot coals. Then it looks like he's throwing the stuff into the fire. Can you tell me why you think he's doing that? Well, I'd say the reason for that is that so the stuff won't keep burning around the unburned stuff, but will get burned up in the burning stuff. Well, I had a little trouble following along with you there, but I think I get what you mean. And you were right. When you use the shovel, use it carefully so as not to scatter hot coals and other hot material outside the fire line. Such material can add new fire danger at any time. All right, young fella. Suppose you try your hand with the other boys. Now I'd like to show you how the shovel can do a good job in the absence of water. Sometimes on the fire line, hot spots occur that must be cooled down before line construction can continue. In the absence of water, it's the shovel again that becomes invaluable. For dirt, properly thrown, can help cool and smother a lot of fire. Such work sometimes necessitates two men backing up the first man to loosen and pulverize the dirt and piling it ready for use. When the ground is hard and not easily loosened, other tools are sometimes more efficient for this work, but that's something we'll talk about later. As I said, it may be necessary to have one or two men digging up dirt for the thrower. It all depends upon the hardness of the ground. In any event, dirt, when properly thrown, can be very effective in cooling down flames in snags, fallen trees, or high brush. The most effective action for reaching higher hot spots is the smooth overhand throw, as you see it demonstrated here. For ground fire, the dirt should be thrown in a swinging motion at the base of and parallel to the fire. Incidentally, fires burning in low fuels can be slowed down by smothering with the shovel. Use short, fast strokes to avoid fanning and spreading the fire. Okay, okay, take it easy, take it easy. You're up against something you haven't learned yet. The shovel, while not primarily designed as a cutting tool, can be used on small brush and similar material when a regular cutting tool is not available. I'm going to ask Jim here to show you what I mean. Let's get out of his way so we can go to work. If you're going to use the shovel to cut with, swing it with short chopping strokes, using the edge of the blade as a cutting tool.
Roots can carry the fire under the fire line from the burning area to the outside. Sometimes it's necessary to use a shovel to cut the roots. For this purpose, the point of a shovel is used, and pressure is applied with the foot on the heel of the blade. Care should be taken to avoid letting the foot slip, which might result in cuts on the ankle or leg. If you've made sure before you've left the truck that the edge of your shovel was sharp, then this type of work will be a lot easier. Thanks, Jim. We've talked before about working with hard ground. Now let's talk a little more about it. I want to emphasize that all-important word, safety. Notice the careful placing of the foot before applying pressure. This man knows that a slip can be dangerous. Incidentally, he's constructing what we call a trench. In fire line construction on hillsides, Trenching is often necessary to catch rolling material coming out of the burned area. A trench catches the material and keeps it from moving on down into unburned ground cover, thus starting a new fire. Now you've seen the proper way to use the shovel for digging in hard ground. Let's look at it when it's being used in comparatively soft ground. When the ground is soft, trenching naturally is an easier job. The shovel is used with a forward motion as we see here. Generally speaking, the usual periods in which we have our greatest fire hazard are during extended dry spells. That means that most of the time, if we have to build a trench, we'll be working in hard ground. However, at times when the ground is soft, it's a forward motion with the shovel that works best for us. Usually, after burning embers are dug out, we prefer to scatter the hot material inside the fire line to burn up quickly. However, if we have moist dirt available, such materials can be worked into the dirt until they are cold. Sometimes it's necessary to pull burning brush and limbs back into the burned area and away from the fire line. By hooking the corner of the blade on such material, Dan can drag it while still keeping it a safe distance from him. And it's a good idea to keep a safe distance between you and a fire. Yes, and there's another mighty useful way to handle the shovel. The blade can be used to shield the face against the searing heat of burning brush or other intensely hot materials. Well, Elmer, even in a training session like this, there's still one all-important job to be done put out the fire. Well, I guess that does it, men. Put her out. Elmer, you've had a big day. Why don't you go back to the barracks and take a shower? Thanks a lot. The shovel is not the perfect tool for all firefighting jobs, but it is probably the best basic multipurpose tool available. Now let's go over some of the high spots of this training session. Before you use any tool, learn how to use it properly. Test the tool for defects before you leave the fire camp or truck. Get in the habit of carrying the tool properly and safely. Keep a safe distance, at least 10 feet, between yourself and the next man at all times. When you're using a tool, let your body help along with your arms. And stop before you're exhausted. Dress properly. Don't expose your skin to the heat of the fire. Keep burned materials inside the fire line. Unburned materials outside. The idea is to control the fire, not to spread it. In the absence of water, throw dirt on the fire to cool it down. Smother the fire with short strokes. When you're using a shovel, chop with short strokes and cut roots carefully. You can use the shovel 
to drag burning limbs. And of course, the shovel blade will help protect your face from the heat of the fire. I'm sure you'll find the shovel, properly used, can help you put out a lot of fire.